Hey guys, even here, and in five days, we're gonna have another pro show, we're gonna have Portugal, also known as Mr. Big Evolution Pro, and this show is probably gonna be the weakest show of this year, and no, I'm not saying that because these guys in this lineup are not gonna be that good, it's because it's not really a bunch of very known guys, like it was, for example, at New York Pro, we know most of those guys, they're pretty famous, and Nick Walker also brought an amazing package, so it was a good show for that reason, but the most of the other competitors aside from Nick and Justin were off with conditioning. So this show might be good, because who knows what kind of shape these guys will bring, maybe they're not that much known, maybe they're not exactly top, top tier bodybuilders, but if they bring great conditioning, it's gonna be a better show than, for example, New York Pro. So, this show, this lineup right here, I pretty much don't know any of these guys. I think I remember this Italian guy, Muzzi, Muzzi, whatever, I think he did Puerto Rico Pro, and you might remember Tim Budesheim from 2019, and I believe he was second to Patrick Moore. He says he was 106 kilos on that stage, and 10 weeks out of this show he was 117 kilos. So is he gonna be bigger or is he gonna be the same? I don't know. But he was a good bodybuilder. He was he was a pleasant surprise. He has great genetics, great aesthetics, a lot of potential. Ser seriously, I mean, he has all the tools to be a great bodybuilder one day. This is the most recent update of him in Portugal right now. Here he's taking a photo with uh, David Hoffman, his fellow German. They both traveled to Portugal to compete. Now, of course, Tim is like one whole step behind David, and so he's getting dwarfed, and also David is quite a bit tall, so he's not a short guy, he is gonna be dwarfing these shorter guys easily. Yes, I said David Hoffman is a classic physique competitor, I'm sure you know him, he is pretty famous, but this page, Buys and Tries, posted this, and they made some corrections as far as this show, and they made quite a lot of mistakes with this official list on IBB page, on IBB website, and uh, as you can see right here, they say David Hoffman is missing from the list, and this is the list for open bodybuilding, so David Hoffman is back in open bodybuilding, he was an open bodybuilder way before, and he really did have those classic lines, and he represented them fine in open bodybuilding. But then when he decided to do classic, I was never a fan of him, because he always looked like a depleted, flat bodybuilder, who got sick 20 days out and wasn't able to train or, or eat or whatever. He just always looks flat, and in classic physique, I don't really like him. I preferred him in bodybuilding, because for his frame... For him to look great, he needs to be much heavier than he can in classic physique. He does have great classic lines, but he's not meant for this division because of the weight cap. Same thing goes with like Regan Grimes, for example, so you get the idea what I'm saying. I don't wanna be too harsh to him, he wasn't always that much off when he was competing in classic physique. So here, for example, he does look quite a bit fuller, but it still just doesn't flow that well. It's not like Chris Bumstead classic physique, no, no. It is a classical physique, but I would prefer to see these classic lines in, in open still. So back in the day when he was doing the open, he was good. He showed potential. The genetics were there, the shape was there, he just needed to fill this frame out quite a bit, and he would be a great, great prospect. In my opinion, unfortunately for him, classic physique became a thing and he decided to do it. He is probably the only, the first bodybuilder that I actually heard say he chooses to do classic physique because it's much easier for him for his private life, because he has a family, he has a wife and children, and it's much easier for him to eat less, to use less gear, it's much less of a dedication, so he decided to do what is easier, and he said this in an interview, this is the first time I heard that, it's not that he's doing classic physique because he loves classic physique, because he believes in the division, no, it's simply because it's easier. So imagine if everybody knew this, and the judges heard this, would the judges let him win a classic physique show? I mean, let him win the Mr. Olympia, for example, if he was that good. To represent the classic physique and to say, I'm doing this only because it's easy. Come on, <laughs> it's not a smart move, but at least he was honest. Again, he had great potential for bodybuilding, but he was no Phil Heath. He did not have those kind of genetics, that kind of round, bubbly muscle, but uh, you can see, you can definitely see him becoming something like Dennis Wolf, who was third at the Mr. Olympia, who could have been like second, and he was third and after Kai and Phil, 
and I think they were outclassing him a little bit, but if they came much more off, maybe he could have slided into that top two, but like to win the Mr. Olympia, no. But still, third place at the Mr. Olympia, guys, that, that's quite an achievement. And a lot of bodybuilders, a lot of people are actually big, big fans of Dennis Wolf because he does have an impressive, uh, very, very impressive and unique looking physique. So this is David Hoffman right now, and he's saying he's 115 kilos here, which is about 260, and there is no way he can do classic physique at 260 at his height, no, no. But uh, apparently, as the page Bison tries say, he's doing open bodybuilding, and I'm glad to see him back in this division. He definitely does need more muscle to fill out the frame, and once he does that, he has the classic factor, but still, this physique needs weight, it needs a lot of muscle to fill out the frame completely and just to look good. He needs to be like 130 kilos, which is like something close to 300 pounds. He needs to be something like that for his height in open bodybuilding to be like Dennis Wolf, right? So we'll see how he's gonna do it to Portugal against the other top open guys. I do expect Tim Boresheim to actually beat him here because he is shorter and much more fill out. Yeah, he does look uh, smaller here, but that's because of the out-angling thing. On the stage, it's gonna be obvious what's going on, and I believe Tim Boresheim will beat David Hoffman and also win the show. And David Hoffman, how well will he plays at this weight for his height? I don't see him being better than top 6 at this show, but I don't know who else is coming, so we'll see. But I'm glad to see him back in the open. Hopefully he will progress more over the years. Okay, so Portugal is in 5 days, but in 5 days and a week we're gonna have Chicago Pro. And here is the potential, probably, most likely, I can already say, a winner of Chicago Pro. Hunter Labrada, whose legs got so dry, look at this, look at this, I mean, over the, over the weeks coming into the show, he was getting leaner slowly, slowly, and then at the two weeks out mark, he stepped on that gas pedal, and he got flat for the first time, and when he's flat, I mean, look at this dryness, look at the details, the deep, deep cuts in the legs, I didn't even know he had this. It's gonna be a different level of conditioning for Hunter for sure. Take a look at his arms. They are looking flat. Honestly, I never saw him this flat. I believe this was a lag... Yeah, it was a lag day. He says right here, the last quad day of this prep. And when your legs are this big and you are just overall depleted, all the muscle and the glycogen and the water, it all goes, you know, with the blood to your legs and it draws all the other nutrients, all the other glycogen and water and everything from the rest of your body. And that's why his upper body looks so depleted and his legs do look absolutely insane. So he's gonna be done with the leg work and now he's gonna get a little bit fuller in the upper body. He still has some time to get even more shredded and then to just, you know, fill up slowly, as he says, to nail the look. And to win this show easily, I mean, take a look at these squads, god. He was shredded last year, but he was not this shredded, not this peeled. He did not have this kind of vascularity, this kind of thin skin. Just look at how thin his skin is. And this is almost two weeks out, so he still has about a week. A week to get even more shredded. And this is what he has done in five days since he started really nailing it. You know who this reminds me of? Branch Warren, right? I mean, the vascularity, the way he's hitting this pose. You know that Branch Warren famous quad stomp pose? Also the calves, just overall the height, and this, this lateral outer head and the feathers on it just really reminds me of Branch Warren. Why am I reminding you when I can just show you this photo? But I'm sure most of you are bodybuilding fans, you knew this photo, you knew what I was talking about, and here you can see, yeah, it does look quite a bit similar. Maybe little brother should be worried, <laughs> just kidding. Look at this, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quite a bit of a resemblance. So, who do you think is better? I think branch legs do look better, more impressive. Calves too. I don't know about the upper body, as far as the back and the arms. My, maybe Hunter has him in that department, but overall, yeah, branch is a better bodybuilder. He was second at the Mr. Olympia. But give Hunter a few years. We'll see what Hunter will do in a few years. I think he has the potential to surpass to surpass Branch Warren because he doesn't have lagging arms or back or, or midsection problems. Maybe he will never have as impressive chest as Branch, but other than that, overall, the structure, the completeness, I think Hunter has bigger potential to be a greater bodybuilder and to actually win the Mr. Olympia. Branch came very close to it. 
If Jay didn't nail the look in 2009, Branch would have won that Mr. Olympia, but it just didn't happen. So we'll see what Hunter will do, but uh, again... Hunter is about 12 days out of Chicago Pro, where he will destroy everybody, in my opinion. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Wow, Max Charles, he's doing Arnold Classic this year, and look at his delt right here, and the arm, and overall, his entire body just looks so massive, so hard and full. I don't know, this guy, he was, uh, he was, a lot of people thought he was underrated. Especially Milo Sharchev, who is, by the way, Max's coach, and of course his coach is gonna tell the best things about his client, that's that's normal, but Milos maybe went a little bit overboard and he made Ian cry, Ian Valier, who won the New York Pro and not Max, Max was like fifth, and uh, Milos didn't agree with that, so he talked a lot about that, and eventually Ian started crying in a podcast, talking about that, so... Milos said a few things, and <laughs> Max, I mean, he looks amazing, and, and he looked amazing, and he has a lot of really good shots, but he has some weak ones, and that's why he's not placing as high as, for example, Milos would, would expect. Milos is known for liking more aesthetic physiques, and he talks about ab development and symmetry and, and that kind of stuff, and Max does have that, but then again, it's not all about abs and thighs, the most muscular, maybe side chest, those poses are really good for him, the others not really that much. In this one, as you can see, he's standing next to the winner, and I think he was the, the last one in this lineup, and he's absolutely crushing everybody in this lineup with this particular pose, but not with the many others, he's absolutely annihilating Ian. Ian looks horrible in the abs and thighs, and that is kind of normal, normal for, for a big guy, for open bodybuilders, to not look that good in the abs and thighs, it's not the case with Max Charles, it's probably his best pose, him, Sean Roden, maybe a few more bodybuilders are good in, in absent eyes, but it's very rare, so he did definitely destroy him in this one, and as I said, side chest is also a very good pose for Max, I don't know about the others, we'll see how much progress will he make, but here, he looks like an absolute freak of nature, I mean, this delt, it's basically independent, it's, it's separated from his entire body, uh, the form, let's not even talk about his lifting form, he always had this, this really short range of motion, you can see maybe he's moving the, the, this bar 3-4 inches up and down, like he's covering his knees, I don't know if he's thinking about that, but I think that's about his range of motion, it works, it works for him, maybe we should all train like this, it does look easy, it does look, uh, maybe it's not easy, it's, it's like constant tension type of thing, but uh, I don't know, I would like to train like this, if I would grow up from this, I don't think I would, I think Max is a genetic freak, and let's not even talk about his lifting form, because we are not looking as good as him, so he knows what he's doing, he knows what works for his body, he doesn't have a lot of injuries, I think that's why he trains like this, because of that, and we'll see how he will look at the Arnold Classic stage, hopefully his legs will come up, will look better, but he does look like a freak right now. Also, we have an update of Sergio Oliva, whose bicep peaks are not exactly the tallest, but his arms are really freaking big and really round, they're basically forming a circle, so he does have some good arm development, and overall he has a big frame, a lot of muscle, will it be enough for him to like win the Arnold Classic? I don't think so, but he will get a lot of points from placing in like top 5, top 4, top 3, and as you guys heard probably by now, Anno Classic 2021 will be a qualifier for Mr. Olympia 2021. They just changed that, it was supposed to be qualification for 2022 Mr. Olympia, but now it's gonna be a last chance for a lot of bodybuilders to actually qualify or gather more points for this year's Mr. Olympia, which I think is very exciting, very interesting, it's gonna be a great show this Arm Classic, we're gonna have for example Sergio Oliva, who looks... On the photos, individual photos, he doesn't look that big, but you can get the idea right here, for example, also a recent photo of him, here you can see how big this guy actually is, right? Right? I mean, you can see how small his head is compared to the rest of his body. He is known for being deceivingly big. A lot of people told me this when they saw him in person, I personally never saw him in person, but people that I know saw him and they told me he looks... He's one of the biggest bodybuilders out there uh, uh, in person, like in clothes and stuff, not on stage. On stage, it looks like he needs a little bit more muscle, because he has such a wide, such a huge frame. So, again, because of that, I don't think he filled it up that much to be like the, the winner of the Iron Classic, but he is a big bodybuilder, no doubt about that. I don't know how many points Iron Classic will grant him, but it does grant a lot of points. 
So hopefully we'll see all of these top guys at the Mr. Olympia, but it seems like a few of them will miss the chance to compete at the Mr. Olympia because there is only so many shows left, so many points to gather, so many shows to win to get a qualification. So it seems like a, quite a few bodybuilders, top top bodybuilders will not be at the Mr. Olympia. Maybe they will give them special invites, but that would not be fair. So probably we'll not see a lot of them, so they better try their best. And that's gonna make this year great, because they know they don't have a lot of chances to qualify. They need to be at their best. For example, Ian Valier knows that, obviously. I mean, that's the only logical explanation for him looking like this at 4 weeks out. At 266. So he's gonna be bigger this year, and probably more conditioned. Working with Patrick Tour for another year, for another offseason, will make Patrick know more about Ian, Ian's body, and therefore the peak week is gonna be, uh, is gonna flow smoother. They know what to expect now after having more experience. So right now, Ian looks just humongous, and he's getting in a really good shape. So we'll see how well will he place at the, at the Arnold Classic, and then the, and then also the other shows. I think he's gonna do Texas, uh, Tampa also, I believe, or Toronto, Toronto, bro, I'm not sure. We'll see which, show he's, which shows he's gonna do, but Arnold Classic, yeah, and I think he will win that qualification and also be at the Mr. Olympia. He was 7th last year, will he jump places this year? Possibly, I can see that, I wouldn't be too surprised, no? Yeah, Justin was 10th at the Mr. Olympia last year, so Ian is a better bodybuilder officially, but it seems like Justin was never this driven, and uh, I don't think he was ever this big in the offseason. So he's 10.3 weeks out. Is that uh, 10 weeks and 3 days or a third of a week? That's about 2.1 days if I calculated it right. I'm not really sure what he meant, but I'm pretty sure it's, uh, it's 10 weeks and 3 days. Uh, I just need to calculate this, but I'm too lazy to do it. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter at all. I'm just having fun right here. So he's 293 fasted. So he is gonna be he's gonna be huge on that Arnold Classic stage, and we will see how Justin Rodriguez the Nightmare will do as well. It's gonna be a freaking amazing show, and I can't wait to watch it. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you want to see more bodybuilding videos, let me just say the best bodybuilding news, the best bodybuilding show coverage on YouTube. Subscribe to this channel, guys. All the best and bye bye.